South and east. Oh, mercy, mercy, me. All things I want to use to be. What about this overcrowded land? How much more view from man can she stand? Ooh, oh, I'm all good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. You know, y'all, I, I just been thinking about something, and I want any and every sane and rational person under the sound of my voice to just Challenge yourself with this question. You know, out of all the groups that they consider um, public enemy, groups like the Panthers, or NOI, or Marcus Garvey, or Noble Drew Ali, or, you know, anybody, Kwame Torre, anybody that was in leadership that had a quite a bit following. You notice that none of them have ever, ever, ever attacked any white people, any white synagogue, any um, um, none of the black groups. I mean, uh, if you can find one that jumps out, let me know because I, I stand to be corrected. Whereas you have all these white supremacists that are hell bent on destroying us just because we don't want to be enslaved by them. Just think about the mindset of a group of people that don't that want to mistreat you, screw over you, and then want to fight you and throw out the wrath of the government and every damn thing else that it is the government actually because you don't like to treat me. They're forcing their madness on you. And when you push back, they'll unleash the whole wrath of their military, whatever they got against you. And you ain't never, ever, ever used any of your groups or powers to attack them. I mean, not like the weathermen. Look at them. Look at look at the look at the weathermen, or groups like that that who saw the oppression, or the, uh, what was that? The Liberation Army. A lot of groups. Well, I ain't gonna say the Liberation Army. I'm just gonna say a lot of white groups that were opposed to the war that were opposed to the politics of America, the systemic racism. You notice that when they retaliate, they can blow up buildings, they can blow up everything, and it's just like, wow, like Timothy McVeigh. Point I'm trying to make here is, what have y'all ever accomplished by punching down. Because that's basically what you're doing. You're punching down. You've taken everything. You've taken our rights. You've taken pretty much everything that belonged to us. You stole our land. You did everything, right? Rape, pillage, rob. And you punched down. I don't see you over there. um, Well, you know, and I don't think we have any allies. Like John Henry Clark said, you don't have no friends. And it's taken us a hard time to befriend one another from all the atrocities and the 
uh, madness that has have been put on us. But you know what I thought about? Well, sometimes I said, how can these people be so crazy? You know, the kind of people that would slit a baby, a woman, black woman's belly, let the baby come out and drop on the ground and stomp his head. Who? What kind of people would do this? Because certainly they got no human in them. And there's no humanity there. And then to take their children to make them watch this stuff. When most children are so pure and innocent, they, that right there is such a disruptive to their pure spirit to make them watch you stump and burn a black person after church on Sunday. Who can have that much evil in them against people who have never ever done that to them. Ever. You would think that it would be race riots every single day with every black person that it is just killing white people on GP. Whatever they can do on GP, they don't care now because they didn't been through it all. Why would they care? They would be murdering you at every turn. But they don't because it's not their nature. They just want you to leave them a hell alone. That's what we want. We want you to just leave us alone. Because we haven't really done anything but just talk about you and pull the cover off of you and expose your wickedness. And for that, <laughs> you turn out the full force of the military. When we riot because it's the call of the unheard and we get sick of the oppression and then y'all want to act like we don't have any reason to be upset, why don't you just follow history and see how history leads right into today? And if you're not willing to do that, then you should open up your mouth and say nothing. Nothing. And But then I thought about something. I said, how could they be so wicked? But I don't know if a lot of y'all remember the 70s, whatever. You know, matter of fact, the, the movie Scarface depicted it perfectly. When they had all those Cubans that were up under Florida, up under the uh, under uh, Gurges, you know, they were up under the freeways. And they had tent cities and because what Jimmy Carter did was told uh, Fidel Castro that he could uh, send his tired and his oppressed and his worn over to America. And so what Castro said was, okay, thank you. You're going to be that dumb. And so he emptied out his insane asylum. He emptied out his prisons. Those were the first ones. He ain't sitting under his good class. He sent all the crazies from out of Cuba. Cuba, and sent them over, and they were all up under that bridge. Some of them went to uh, uh, people's homes, and they murdered them. They, you know, they was all kinds of stuff when you sponsored some of them Cubans, and you were wondering, what the fuck is wrong with them? Well, it's because you fool, you got just what you asked for. You thought you were going to get the cream or the crop? Now you got the, the the babies and the offspring of them crazies over here. But what really got me was when I thought about when they set up to build America. And who did they send? And when I went ask myself, how come some of these people be so crazy to do the things that they've done? Burn us at the stake? Do a, who, what kind of mind could do that? And then what kind of mind could even do that to their own child? And make their child watch that type of brutality. People that's done came out the crazy house. People that's done came out of the jails and criminally insane. And that's who the queen them sent over here to start America. So America was started by these mentally insane, just uh, pathologically insane individuals who begin to spread their seed and they milk amongst uh, the Africans and every damn body else and raping people. 
These were the dregs of society. The mentally ill, the uh, prisoners, and the lowlifes of society. That's who started this country, and that's where the standard is. So, when you meet some of these uh, white folk that are real brutal, like like to stick guns in people mouths, and um, because they all flock to the um, uh, police and uh, positions of authority, so they can exercise that madness because they have a thirst for it. That's why I said, no, nobody wants to uh, defund the police. What we want to do is just uh, spread out the resources and how police funds are being used. Because we need some mental health uh, people involved. And for the officers that have mental problems, as well as the clients that they meet or the constituents on the street that they meet. See, because your police are the highest domestic, I mean, advocators or uh, perpetrators of domestic violence. Look at their, rep look at their uh, reputation that precedes them. Drug use, all that. But they out here trying to control people and enforce the law. So we really got a problem here in America, and we have a problem. We gonna keep one until we really, will, really willing to face our demons. And when I say demons, I mean it. I mean demons. They worship demons over here. There's an underclass of society that nobody want to talk about. The sacrifices of human beings and all that kind of stuff. Well, that's just something for another blog. So I won't get into that now. But you're really dealing with a lot of satanic energy. And it has been from the beginning. With a bunch of mentally ill, categorically insane, dregs of society, white folk, low life, and they enforced, or I should say, perpetrated and forced all that madness, all of that madness onto us as a people. So, I mean, I know a lot of y'all won't get mad about this. I see you in the comment section when you do leave one. A lot of y'all don't like to face your demons, but you can't fix what you can't face. And um, a lot of y'all are the relatives of, of those dregs, of those mentally ill, sick people. I was scrolling through and I saw something on, on True Social and there was a white guy who was a Trumper and he was so nasty. He's right there on live camera spitting in the bottle talking about how great Trump was and he didn't say not one thing that Trump did that was good for society. Uh, nothing. He, he, he couldn't. All he kept talking about, yeah, fight. Yeah, fight. Yeah. He's certainly an offspring of one of those mentally ill dregs. He's definitely an offspring of that. And for those of y'all who are white that are listening, y'all got them in y'all family. Y'all know the crazies. The one are just so hell-bent on racism and not ending it and keeping it going on and thinking that there's something wrong with black people. Except you. Y'all know it. And... And those of you who don't speak up, shame on you. Shame on you. Because a lot of y'all should be ostracizing yourselves from, from some of your family members. Whenever they get to talking crazy like that, acting like that, you're supposed to separate yourself from them. You are. But with that being said, I, I just want you to think about that and, and tell me what you think. Because I believe that this is just the dregs of society acting out. And so we ain't going to never get nowhere with them in Congress. We're not going to never get nowhere with them in the legislature. They all have to be weeded out. 
they have to be weeded out. The insane corporate monsters that would feed, force feed poison as opposed to helping being part of the solution. Come on, y'all. Maybe it's me. Tell me what you think. And I'll look forward to your comment below. If you like what you hear, subscribe and share the channel. And we'll see you in the next one.